Dr. Kamalesan, well known all over the world, is a favorite speaker of Madame Convention for several years and vice president of World Division until recently. When God called Kamale, Dr. Kamalesan, he resigned his medical profession and became the senior pastor of the Emmanuel Motherist Church, Madras. While ministering in Madras, he, with a couple of his friends, founded French Missionary Prayer Band, which became one of the largest missionary organizations in South Asia. When I was in Trivandrum, I was very fortunate to have the fellowship of this great ministry. He was also instrumental in starting an orphanage in Salem, Tamil Nadu. He studied at Osbury Theological Seminary and did his doctoral studies at Emory University, Atlanta. After that, he became Vice President of the World Division in Monrovia, California. There he started the South Asian Christian Fellowship of USA and Canada. He is married to Adilai, have three children and seven grandchildren. Dear brothers and sisters, let us welcome Dr. and Mrs. Sam Kamalesan to our Horror Martha Church. Since the Lord has blessed him with great gift of singing, it's my great pleasure to invite him to sing a song and share the message the Lord has given him for this Christmas season. Dr. Kamalesan. To my brother, I am grateful for those kind words of introduction. He said that I will sing. I must honor him. I have not brought any score with me. So if you will be patient with me, I will just sing and let it fall where it falls. The chimes of time ring out the news Another day is through Someone slipped and fell was that someone you? You may have longed for added strength, your courage to renew. Just do not be disheartened, for I have news for you. It is no secret what Christ can do, what he has done for others, he will do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what Christ can do. Thank you. There is no night, for in his light you'll never walk alone. Always feel at home, wherever you may roam. There is no power can conquer you when God is on your side. 
Just do not be disheartened. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what Christ can do, what he has done for others. He will do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. It is no secret what Christ can do. Will you pray with me? That you are among us is a givenness. We don't work for it. We don't strive for it. It is a givenness. You promised it. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. Lord Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that the eyes of our hearts may be opened to see you. That our will may be willing to be subject to your will. That you will come in to our lives and rule and reign, for you are the King. Blessed Holy Spirit, so appropriate the truth to every person here tonight. For we pray this prayer in the name that cannot be denied, either in heaven or on earth, the name of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to bring to your attention brief truth, that the truth may go home with you. And even as you drive home, you may talk about this to a man called Nicodemus who came to Jesus at night searching for the truth, Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Nicodemus had said in his introductory statement, Rabbi, you, you're not an ordinary guy. Nobody can do the things that you do if he doesn't come from God. You must be from God. Just tell us what is the purpose? Why this enormous invasion of man's world. Why put on the humanity that is so different from what you are used to? Rabbi, what is the purpose? And then Jesus said two important things and I would like to leave that with you. First he said, it is love that gives. Second, he said, this is done in order that you may have faith that will appropriate what is given for redemptive ends. I have a strange habit of asking, are you listening? Would you get offended if I said that? 
Are you listening? Are you? No? Two things. Love that gives because it's the expression of love to give. Where love is, it must express itself. The most powerful force, energy known to human beings is love. There is nothing more powerful than love. Love must express itself. A little boy plucks a flower along the way home and gives to his mother and says, Mother, this is beautiful, but if you wear it in your hair, it'll be more beautiful. He's saying, I love you. And the highest measurement, the vehicle that will measure his love is the flower. Young man buys a box of Jack chocolates, sees candy, and gives it to the girl of his love and says that these are sweet, but they are sweeter than these. Some girls can sit and eat through one box of chocolate in one sitting and forget the guy who gave it. But that is the highest expression the young man can express himself through. The more able man, like the ones that I'm seeing sitting here, may build a bungalow and give the key to the lady and say, bigger things are in store if you stay with me. What if God loves? Have you ever asked that question? What if the character of God is love? How will he say, this is how much I love you? When you drive home, don't criticize the performance. Talk about his love. Because that's why we get it. I love you. I love you so much. But the highest, the most adequate expression is by giving myself. This is how much I love you. The God so loved you that He gave His only beloved Son. What necessitates this ultimate expression? The nature of God is holiness. The nature of a man has been stained by deliberate sin. Put God's holiness and man's sin together, the result is the wrath of God. They don't work together. What could God do if he wants still to say to mankind, I love you? The only way he could say it is to give himself and say, I will redeem you. I give myself to you. Nicodemus, you are wondering what's going on. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you will turn loose what you and you alone can turn loose, you will know the redemptive power of this love in your life. BBC had what they called brain's trust many years ago. And they will take a subject and handle it and come to some conclusions before that time was gone on the air. One time they picked up the story about love and they went into 
all sorts of literature to find out the greatest love story of all. Someone suggested Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. And then someone else said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There was a hush among the brain's trust. Finally, everybody agreed. There's nothing to beat that. The redemptive reality of Christmas is he gives because love cannot sit and watch self-destruction. He had to be involved. It is love that gives. How do I make it my own? We have heard this. Pampa River. Do you know where Pampa River is? Do you? Tell your children. Don't let them think that Mississippi is the only river in the world. Tell them the story of what happened on the banks of Pampa River. That is a marvelous story. And it will go on. And it will go on. Faith that brings heaven's reality to me. I'm tired of just hearing this. I have proclaimed this on the sands of the Pampa River so many times. I have touched the reality. But how do I appropriate what God gives to me, to where I live in Anaheim, in Arcadia, in Monrovia, in Pasadena, Los Angeles? How does it come? Whosoever believeth in him, the word belief jumps out of the writing. It is nothing that you can read because it jumps at you and says, take me. If you just read it and go to bed, you know nothing about belief. Saving faith is the personal reality. It is an actualization of the event of not just Bethlehem, but the whole event of Jesus of Nazareth. Of course, it includes Calvary and the empty grave. I have heard this story and uh, the print seemed to say that the story is true. Most of us, when we have a guest who comes to visit the United States, would like to t <coughs> <coughs> pardon me, would like to take that guest to see the Niagara Falls, if we could. There is the story about a man called Blondin. Have you ever read this story by any chance? Blondin was a tightrope walker. He was a performer. And he boasted that there was never anyone like him before, and there can never be anyone after him who could equal his perfection. And in order to prove this to the world, it is said that on a said day, at a said time, he stretched a cable 
across the Niagara. Now, you, you, I, I sincerely hope you have seen the Niagara. The falls? No, I'm not putting you to a test. <laughs> I'm just trying to draw you in with me. It is a stupendous sight, isn't it? He stretched a cable and began to walk across that cable. About the middle, the swing and the sway that is inevitable was really something that he had to work with in order to stay on top. He regained his balance, moved on, jumped on the other shore. People cheered. Drunk with success, he turned to the crowd and said, Do you believe that I can walk across the Niagara on that cable? Because everybody said, Only a fool will not believe, having seen you do it. We all believe. Then he said, which one of you believes in me to let me carry you back? Now that's different, isn't it? Are you with me? Whosoever believeth in him. It's not a theological argument. It is an existential transference. He took my place. Hallelujah. I can take his place. Christmas. Manger. God. Angels. What was all of this show for? It's not a show. It is to enable you and me overcome the reluctance that keeps us on this side, still guessing. Nobody ventured. They said, you want to do it again? Go ahead, Blondin, make yourself a double success. Then the report says, where arguments wouldn't convince anybody, the man offered a huge amount of money. Money will convince people. This is United States. But money convinces people in India too. In Kerala, money can buy. So, the man convinced someone who was willing to be bought. Uh, here the account changes. One account says, Blondin put his cargo on a wheelbarrow and wheeled him across. Another account says he took his human cargo on his shoulder and walked back. Whichever way it was transported, another human being was taken as cargo and a man began to cross. People took huge bets. And when it appeared as if he will make it, they jolted the cable, just to make sure that their money was on the right side. The man overcame everything, jumped on the security, and the crowd cheered like crazy. Then two friends were driving home in the same car. One was a believer. The other went to church. but never believed. Are, are, you, are you listening? Yes. Nani. Thank you for talking with me. <laughs> they cheered and they were going home. Two friends, one a believer and the other a church attender, but not a believer. 
were driving in the same car and the believer said hey do you believe that blondin can cross the niagara on a cable stretched across nothing to hold on to he said of course i do i saw it man then he said be a little patient with me do you believe he can carry another human being and bring him back safely he said what do you think i'm a fool with my own eyes i saw it i do believe then the friend said hey would you be the guy who let blondin carry him across not for all the gold in the world stupid question but are you listening yes bolo by sab this is the crux of the matter this is our first year we said may god give us a hundred years more but may every one of those years bring not only children but mature adults who think they are too smart for this sort of a thing to repentance and faith because God so loved the world that he gave to tell you I love you so much the highest he could give in order that you wouldn't just sit there criticizing God's action but you because of the desperation of the movement that's upon you will turn to him and say prajabadi dharma raja thank you thank you for remembering me without you i have no option no where to turn but in you i do it has been done keralam knows this story in every little village in every little plot of rice that is cultivated the story of the centuries in kerala mez he does yennayum rachit yesu raja may you go home with him in your heart tonight very simple because it is a simple act to say i trust you if he took the initiative and as the angel said left heaven and came to a manger and did not think that the womb of a virgin was too far below him all for me what am i twiddling my thumb for it's time <coughs> i moved and i said king come take rule transform it is love that gives in order that you can have faith that saves redeems you 
not somebody else. Shall I pray with you? Would you like that? Would you bow your heads? Close your eyes. Pratikyam, Lord. In so many ways this evening, you spoke to us. When we looked at our little ones standing there to, <coughs> to portray and reflect what happened on that night in Bethlehem. It was very difficult not to remember. Not to remember the rice fields earnest invitation. This is our opening as we celebrate the first year of our congregation. Invade us, Lord, and through our relationships invade the world around us. We pray this prayer in the name of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Say it. Amen, says even so, let it be. Amen. Amen. God bless you.